Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm The Gerbil. In today's video, I want to talk about K2SO, and that's primarily because you're modding them wrong, and I want to help you with that. I was modding them wrong. It took me a long time to realize this, mostly because you know how you do everything, something every day, you don't think much about it, and then something kind of comes in the way, makes a little hiccup, you compensate for it, and you just keep doing what you used to do. It's called habituation. It's common, don't worry about it, we all do it. But see, when Admiral Raddus replaced Jenners as the leader, we all kind of did the same thing. We just took our, our Rogue One units that we had mostly ignored, we swapped out the leaders, and we said done, and we moved on. But it turns out that Radis's leadership does a few things interestingly, significantly di different than Jen Urza, that we already knew that. But there's also a trend that CG has been doing the last couple years that mean that the tenacity mod set that we're used to putting on K2 is probably not needed anymore. So let's take a look here at some recent characters that have come to the game, be it Inquisitors or Chrysanthemum or the New Tuscans. What do they all have in common? I'll spare you the time. They all have unresistible debuffs. In fact, almost every new character for the last year has an unresistible debuff of one kind or another. Almost all. Not all, but wow, is unresistible a thing? It is just like everywhere. Which is interesting because if everything becomes unresistible, what's the point in tenacity mods to begin with? There becomes no need to have tenacity mods. So I'm saying get rid of them. If you're gonna run Admiral Raddus as a defensive or offensive team, and it is a meta team right now, then it doesn't do you any good to mod for tenacity against other meta teams that are gonna throw out unresistible debuffs. It just doesn't make any sense. And what's also interesting is that in Admiral Raddus's leadership, he's gonna grant K2, as well as all Rogue One allies, 60% tenacity, which just happens to be the same amount of tenacity you would get from a set of tenacity mods, three sets to be exact. So what CG has done is they have gotten us all used to having tenacity mods, and then without, without actually telling us, they have allowed us to take away those tenacity mods, probably on purpose, so that we can remod these characters for something else. So let's figure this out real quick, okay? If we take away tenacity that is not gonna help him resist unresistible debuffs. And we compensate for that loss of 60% tenacity by just baking that into the leadership ability. What would help him more? And the answer is tanks need to survive. They need to survive. Health and protection. As simple as this sounds, stick with me. K2's basic and his special attack are gonna be worthless. He doesn't, he's not gonna really take turns. You don't need him to take turns. In fact, he can never take a turn the whole match and he will still do his job just fine. I'll explain more later. But in his basic and special, he has a chance to apply days and or offense down. And who cares? Forget about it. Just move right on. What matters is his uniques. K2 has a 97% chance to counter attack anytime he is attacked. And this is why everyone modded him for uh, tenacity. Because if he gets a debuff, that drops in half to 48%. And I'm going to say it doesn't matter. He's going to get debuffed. Just accept that. Nonetheless, nonetheless, um, when he counterattacks, and he will counterattack still, when he counterattacks, he will use his basic ability, potentially applying offense down, but it also will grant him taunt. So what's going to happen is you have a cycle here where he's taunting, he gets hit, he counterattacks, loses taunt. Um, or no, they hit him, loses taunt, he counterattacks, gains taunt. It's a, it's kind of a, a back and forth consistent thing. And therefore, what we need, with more depth coming in a second, is we need him to be hit a lot. Seriously, you want K2 just to be hit over and over again, punched in the face until he's, you know, beaten to a pulp and yet still fighting. So we want to probably mod him now for health sets. That'll give him 30% more health on top of the 50% that Radis is giving him on top of the other percents that come in, I think, from Jin's Omicron, and Territory War, or um, I'll get into it. It's crazy what's going to happen here, but you still want high tenacity secondaries, but your primaries, you probably want all health or protection, and I would actually recommend protection, but they're both going to be good. So yes, this guy is going to start off the battle with 50% bonus health from Admiral Raddus, then he's going to get from his leadership. Then whenever he attacks or counter attacks somebody, he's going to recover 20% health and 20% protection and <laughs> when he has spark of the rebellion which we he will in GAC if you have the Omicron he'll start with it 
when he has Spark of the Rebellion and it dispels, he will gain 50% protection up, which is based on his health. And the Omicron also from Admiral Radis will grant him an additional 40% protection. And, and there's just so much more of this, right? When Spark of the Rebellion uh, is dispelled, he will gain an additional 20% protection up. And protection up is based on your health amount, not your tenacity or anything like that, right? It's based on your health. So the more health he has, the more protection up he will receive from Spark of the Rebellion, the more protection up he will receive when Spark is dispelled, and the more he will heal every single time he counterattacks. Remember, he's got a 97% to counterattack, 48% if he's debuffed, and just assume that he will be debuffed. Okay, just assume that. In Territory War, if you run the Gen Omicron, he'll receive an additional 30% max health, thus 30% health from the from three health mod sets is going to yield you a much much higher number so let's just let's quickly rapidly run through some numbers shall we so this is my current k2 so you can see his speed is quite low i've got him modded with triple health sets protection focus i think on all of them i'm not sure i might still have a tenacity cross on him nonetheless 75,000 health 100,000 protection if I switch this and I experimented, I switched it to like to my Malik sets, to my Nest sets, which are all straight tenacity. My health dropped to about 60,000 on average, protection to about 80,000, but my tenacity went up, of course, by at least 60%. So let's just say that this is a, a my current health set on the left and a reasonable average for what I would get with tenacity sets on the right, okay? Now, when we throw in Admiral Radice's leadership, we gain 60% tenacity. So without that tenacity mod set, I'm still gonna be at 178 tenacity. If I kept the tenacity mod set, I'd go up to 230-ish, 240, which is great, but unnecessarily high. There's always a chance that a debuff can breach your tenacity. I think it's a 15% chance no matter what. And as I said, more and more and more tunes are now having unresistible debuffs in their kit, which just completely negates your tenacity, so it doesn't matter. In addition, though, you do get that 50% health, and the difference in this case, 50% of the health mod versus the tenacity mod set, um, but then we get that spark of the rebellion, right? When he gets bonus protection up. With the health mod set, that bonus protection up is gonna give him 56,000 health versus my tenacity mod set. We give him about 45,000, so an immediate 11,000 survivable health right there, protection right there. Um, when he attacks with his counterattack, or even when he takes a turn, he's going to recover 20% health and protection. And we can see quick math there. He'll recover 4,600 more health, and he'll recover about 4,100 more protection, which means every attack, every counterattack, every time he runs over and swings, he's recovering about 5,000 more health and protection with the health mods than the tenacity mods. That adds up a lot in terms of survivability. He needs to be able to take these hits forever. Um, and this, this goes on for a while, but again, it gets way, way more complicated even when you throw in that Grand Arena <laughs> Omicron where suddenly he starts with an additional 40% more protection, which again, 40% more of 100,000 is gonna give you a lot more than 40% of 80,000. Basically, when you do all the math here and you, and you consider that bonus starting 30% health he ends up with somewhere between 40 and 60,000 more health pool by switching to a health versus tenacity mod set. And yet there is no no distinguishable or meaningful impact at all to his tenacity levels. That's, that's the long story short. So here's how K2 should function. When the game starts, turn one, Adrad should go first. He should immediately doing inspiring maneuver, which is going to grant Spark of the Rebellion on all your players. When, when that inspiring maneuver goes off, K2 is going to immediately gain taunt and 50% protection up, uh, and which of course through the leadership, he'll also have that bonus 60% tenacity, another 50% health and some potency. Then what happens is K2 gets pew, 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 pewed, right? In the chest, he's gonna take some damage. He's gonna lose that taunt, but apply expose on the enemy. And that expose is how you're gonna win because that expose is gonna do more damage for you than anything else that uh, anyone on the Rogue One team can deliver. So every time your allies get critically hit, survivability is important, you will inflict expose on them, right? So you want K2 taking hits. And if you want him taking hits, that means you want him to be as survivable and as durable as possible. Now, when K2 gets hit, 
it triggers, uh, he counterattacks, whack, whack to the nose, and then that's going to trigger the expose. It's going to recover his own 20% health, recover 20% protection, hopefully apply offense down on the enemy. He will gain taunt again and increase his maximum protection by 1% and then repeat the process. He does not need to take turns. He just stands there as a punching bag. That is what you want. All right, so here we go. This is going to be, uh, this is from Conquest actually, because I couldn't find any good recent videos. I haven't saved anything, but here we go in Conquest. We got Geos um, against my wonderful Admiral Radis team, and we can see pretty easily here how the AI is not so smart. They're going after Jen. And Jin is just going to absorb almost everything here until finally they're going to switch targets any minute. Okay, well, we got Inspiring Maneuver. They switch target. Watch this. Boom. Did you see that? One hit. One hit. I think that was Sunfact, who had seven stacks of Expose. K2 counterattacked and killed him in one shot. That is how you will win predominantly with Admiral Radis, and that is why you need as much survivability on K2. You don't need, you don't need the tenacity anymore. You really don't. You want that extra 50,000 or 60,000 health pool that comes from giving them three more health sets, sets, health mod sets, with health and protection primaries, all right? So once again, just to wrap it up, it's time to ditch the tenacity, I think. Sorry, bro, but you don't need it. You still got a 48% chance to counterattack, but you do need to recover as much health and protection as much as possible, and you do need to survive as much as possible, K2. You do. You really do. You do. Hey, folks, I hope this video helped. If it did, let me know. If you'd like to see kind of a mod guide from my perspective on someone else, let me know in the comments below. I tend to only do these for the characters I enjoy playing, but I would be happy to help out however I can. And otherwise, give me a like and subscribe. Um, that would be truly awesome. And I will see you on the tables. Bye-bye.